So everybody's fucking, if you was in the Mexican-American War, you was smoking pot. Uh, Franklin Pierce wrote to his family and said that the only good thing that come out of the Mexican War was the marijuana. On the scorching 4th of July in Washington, D.C., you had Taylor, uh, Zachary Taylor attended festivities at the newly decorated grounds upon which the Washington Monument would be erected, according to several sources. Zachary Taylor gulped down a large, large quantity of cherries and iced milk, then returned to the White House where he quenched his thirst with several glasses of water. This is how he's going to fucking die, right? He's going to drink some milk, some water, and some cherries, and then they're going to say that he died of food poisoning or some shit, or he was poisoned intentionally. But then the fucking doctors bleed him. They, they cut him open and they give him blisters and shit. That probably could have fucking killed him too. So this is on the 4th of July, Washington, D.C. This is uh, Zachary Taylor. He's watching the, you know, there's a... Uh, there's, there's festivities on the 4th of July. There's the Washington Monument was going to be erected. So you get all this fucking festival shit. Um, there's outbreaks of cholera. Deadly disease caused by bacteria occurred frequently during the summer months in hot human Washington. During the 1800s, their sewage systems were primitive at best. The bacteria was most likely present in the water, iced milk Taylor drank. Though other sources claim that Taylor died of gastroenteritis caused by the highly acidic cherries combined with the fresh milk. So you got the acidic cherries and you got fresh milk. They fucking worked against each other and then he died of gastroenteritis. This is all bullshit, okay? Zachary Taylor was fucking assassinated. He was fucking poisoned. He was killed. And he was killed because he was trying to allow California to establish themselves as a state. And if you allowed popular sovereignty to, de to decide California's fate of being a free state or a slave state they would have voted free and that would have pissed off the south so they're just a bunch of fucking crybabies they're holding the fucking government hostage um the confederates are threatened secession if they don't get what the fuck they want and really all it wants to do is instead of making a federal issue on the federal territories um uh, he wanted the uh zachary taylor wanted california to become a state and then the people of california could decide on their own so therefore it wasn't a zachary taylor fucking decision but a people of california decision so the uh, food poisoning, right? So no one's, no one ever suggested foul play, right? Bullshit. He was opposed to slavery. A pal, he vowed to personally lead a military attack against any state that threatened to secede from the Union. So including Jefferson Davis, he basically threatened Jefferson Davis. If you secede, I'm gonna fucking kill you. And so this is Zachary Taylor, right? So he was a plantation owner, killing all the fucking Mexicans and shit. But as soon as he got power, he cared more about the Union than what he did about the policy of slavery. So he wasn't going to be, um, you know, told what to do by the slave owning fucking um, South. He was he was going to do what he thought was best for the country. And he said if anybody seceded, then he was going to hang them just like he did with the fucking robbers and the fucking spies, or with the um, deserters, with the deserters and the spies in the Mexican American War, which everybody was smoking pot twice the rate of Vietnam, right? So. Um, then nobody knows why he died. Zachary Taylor died on the evening of July 9th after four days of suffering from symptoms that included severe cramping, diarrhea, nausea, and dehydration. His personal physicians conclude he succumbed to cholera morbus, bacterial infection of the small intestines. Vice President Millard Fillmore was sworn in as the new president the next day. And this was under the fucking Tyler fucking precedent. So in 1991, they actually pulled Zachary Taylor's body up out of Kentucky, out of the fucking um, the resting place here in Louisville. It was exhumed. His fingernails, his hair were examined for any evidence that he was poisoned. The mainstream media, they were fucking lazy. They just repeated what the medical examiner said. And then the medical examiners didn't say that there was no evidence. It just said that there was a little bit of evidence. So the medical examiners checked out the hair and they found a trace amount of arsenic in it. So tiny bits of arsenic was in his hair, but they said that it wasn't enough to actually kill him. So therefore, the, the tiny bit of arsenic did not prove that he was killed. And if anything, it proved otherwise because there wasn't enough in his system to kill uh, Zachary Taylor. My question is, why the fuck was there arsenic in his system? Do we all just have arsenic in our fucking system at any point, at any time? That's bullshit. You got some arsenic... He's been dead for a long ass time just because you don't see the full maximum fucking point of arsenic in his hair follicles doesn't mean that, you know, he didn't have enough fucking arsenic to actually kill him. Gallatin County, they fucking murdered some um, black folks uh, over the, the idea of possible arsenic poisoning. They might have killed somebody with arsenic. 
and they fucking hung him. Here, Zachary Taylor's, you know, um, dies of arsenic. He has arsenic in him, so he has. Uh, he, I don't know if he died of arsenic poisoning, but his um, all of his, you know, the traits that he was saying he had severe cramping, diarrhea, nausea, dehydration, all those things is what happens to an arsenic poisoned person. So they um, they basically case closed, moved on. No one give a shit. Um, Paris Hilton's doing something, or somebody's doing something. So the media just repeats what the supposedly they had found. Um, but why was there any arsenic in his system? Why was there any bit of it? Uh, Zachary Taylor was expected to be a strong defender of Southern rights since he had a plantation and he had fucking slaves. But in spite of being a slaveholder, Zachary Taylor actually opposed the expansion of slavery into new territories. He thought that slavery was a social and political evil. So Zachary Taylor turns out to be a fucking hero in disguise. You know, he's sitting there killing his whole fucking life and then finally gets the gauntlet, gets the power, and he's trying to say, hey, California, establish yourself. Become a fucking free fucking state, you know? Uh, in January 1850, trying to ward off the secession crisis, congressional leaders led by the legendary Henry Clay came up with a number of provisions that became known as the Compromise of 1850. This bill hoped to placate both North and South with a number of compromises. Supposed to make everybody happy. It suggested a stronger Fugitive Slave Act, the admission of California as a free state, and stated there would be no restrictions against slavery in the territories, along with other provisions. Zachary Taylor opposed the bill adamantly, mostly because he felt slavery should be forbidden in the new territories. As secessionist threats multiplied, Zachary Taylor offered to personally lead troops against secession efforts and said he would execute disunionists with less reluctance than I hang spies and deserters in Mexico. So, you want to fucking uh, get away from the Union? You want to leave the Union? That's fine. I'll fucking kill you with less reluctance than what I hang spies and deserters in Mexico. Henry Clay's bill seemed to be facing oblivion. The country was almost close to a civil war in 1850, as it would be in 1861. Then came the July 4th holiday, when Zachary Taylor is fucking killed. So he's going around to these festivals, spending too much in the hot sun, supposedly, then eating too much, um, gives him a stomach, a tummy ache, and then kills him five days later. Then Henry Clay's on the bus bill passed, and the nation stayed together. So how fucking convenient, right? Taylor was blocking the Compromise of 1850 to be fucking passed. Um, some people said he was jealous of Henry Clay's fucking bill, uh, but really extremist secessionists bitched and moaned they hadn't got enough out of the bill, even though they made out like bandits, they continuously played the victim, just like modern Republicans, but the Compromise took the wind out of secessionist sales as most Southerners realized they had done quite well, especially with the fugitive slave law that basically said fuck you to the rights of the northern states. So hot sun, cherries, and milk, you're right? Don't fucking, don't eat fucking cherries and fucking milk while eating the hot sun. It'll fucking kill you. That's horse shit. If you believe that's what Zachary Taylor died of, you're stupid, okay? Uh, you can eat cherries, you can have milk, and you can be in the sun. It won't fucking kill you. So let's get back to the trace amounts of arsenic. We found fucking arsenic in Zachary Taylor's system in 1991. Symptoms of arsenic poisoning include severe cramps, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, fever, abdominal pains, rage, and thirst. That's exactly what the fuck Zachary Taylor had. So that's what, you know, it sounds right up his fucking alley. Diarrhea, you know, uh, dehydration, raging thirst, stomach ache, fever. So the um, they said that the arsenic maybe came from embalming, the embalming fluid. That's what New York Times, Washington Post came. But then Parenti points out that Taylor was not embalmed at the request of his wife. So carrying on with Zachary Taylor... Zachary Taylor was fucking assassinated. He was fucking killed. There was arsenic that was found in his system. There was arsenic in his fucking hair in 1991. How did it stay in his hair from 1850 to 1991? That's 140 years later. He still has arsenic in his system. But everybody overlooked it and said, well, it wasn't enough to fucking kill him. But, I mean, it's, you know, it's still in his hair 140 fucking years later. And if it's poison, then there like some, wouldn't it, like, deteriorate eventually? Wouldn't it fucking, like, evaporate or something? So I'm not for sure. The um, uh, there is uh, arsenic was found inside his system. Some people said that it was because of the embalming fluid, but actually, the, his wife had said told for Zachary Taylor not to be embalmed. So he wasn't embalmed. No fucking arsenic. Um, you know what it came from that. Who knows where the trace amounts of arsenic would have came from? Um, they found it low levels, but he says that small amounts of arsenic are found in nature. That's what he had said. If Zachary Taylor had died of poisoning. The amounts found would have been 200 
to as many as thousands of times higher. So he's saying that there was only one, two hundred of, of fucking, you know, um, it wasn't, it wasn't even close to being enough. That's what the scientists have said. And they all fucking echoed it. Still, why is there arsenic in there? Why is there, you know, there shouldn't be any arsenic in your fucking bloodstream. So that's what they said about Zachary Taylor. He's walking along the Potomac River. <coughs> he's walking along the Potomac River and he goes back to the White House. He's overheated and he's thirsty. He's said to have eaten a huge bowl of cherries, cold water, milk. Later after dinner, he didn't feel well. Next day, he felt worse and he started having bouts of diarrhea, bloody diarrhea. His doctor diagnosed his ailment as cholera treated with calomel opium the doc may have also sliced open a vein and bled the president so he's cutting his fucking vein right he's got he's got either some arsenic poison or he's fucking dying of cholera and they're the doctor's fucking bleeding them they cut a vein right make sure he bleeds out of his veins um they thought it was cholera and said they was giving him opium right just for the pain and calomel whatever the fuck calomel is